You mentioned Pope Francis earlier, and uh, we're in the midst of a well, remarkable pontificate, whatever one thinks of him. It's interesting you quoted Seamus Haney earlier. I was thinking of him because I knew you were good friends with him. And I was thinking uh, of some lines of his that I'd like to recite because I think they, they, they've come to my mind when I thought of Pope Francis. You would be, of course, familiar with these. He wrote, history says don't hope on this side of the grave. But then once in a lifetime, the longed for tidal wave of justice can rise up and hope and history rhyme. And I can't help but wonder whether with Pope Francis we might be seeing one of those rare moments where hope and history rhyme. I'm wondering from your point of view, do you share that hope in oh, what absolutely. Francis is bringing the church? Absolutely. Uh, I, was in the, I was in the square, in St. Peter's Square, the night that he was elected. My husband and I were there. We were jumping up and down, shouting, Vive il Papa, along with all the rest, and then wondering, who is he? <laughs> Who is he? Anybody know his name? Ah, yeah, he's some fella called George. Oh, where's he from? No, he's called Francis. Where's he from? Don't know. Argentina. Really? Yeah. And, and, and eventually we said, does anybody have an iPhone? Could somebody phone home? <laughs> you know, everybody else in the whole world by this stage knew exactly who the Pope was, and we who were standing right under Cardinal Turan hadn't a clue. Not a clue. Um, and on the way home, I fell in with six Argentinian nuns, two of whom were dancing with delight that Cardinal Bergoglio was the new Pope and four of whom we weren't just so sure. And so, um, because they knew him, they, one of them said, you know, he's the bishop who never smiles. And I said, but he smiled. When he, came out onto, when he came out onto the balcony at first, he looked incredibly cross. And I thought, oh God, please smile, please smile. And then he smiled and he absolutely softened every heart around the world that looked at him. And I think, what, I think then there's, uh, much was made of the fact that next day he went back to collect his luggage. And I wondered, why was his luggage so important? And I now realise it was because in his luggage he had packed one hell of a very big long spoon and, uh, with which he could stir up stuff. <laughs> and, um, and I think, you know, we've got, we've got a really extraordinary stirrer-upper and in the Vatican at the moment. I'm sure it doesn't endear him to some of the people closest to him, but it certainly endears him to the, to the patient faithful around the world who have been living in hope for just a moment like this for a very long time. Um, he has served us, what I've described as, so far he has, he has served us an absolutely fascinating dish of little tapas. Um, I'm now waiting for the dinner and um, I'm really looking forward to it. I believe he's quite a good cook. And uh, he'll probably take his time about that. And so he should, and do it right. Um, but I think the tapas that he has served up are utterly intriguing.